This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another MIDI Composer 101 tutorial, and in this lesson, I thought because of the new 8.5 release of Avid Media Composer, we'd circle back and we'd talk specifically in this lesson about multicam editing. Now we talked about multicam editing in the scope of editing music videos, but I wanted to focus just on multicam again because we have a new great feature that's included inside of multicam, and that is of course waveform analysis. And I think it's very important that you see what a huge step forward this is for Media Composer editors, especially ones that work with multicam, doesn't necessarily need to be in the scope of music videos. In the case I'm going to show you, it's actually for a wedding video. But like I said, really in any case that you happen to be using multicam, this new feature is going to be paramount to your workflow. And it's just such a smooth way to work. So I thought we would dedicate a tutorial specifically to it. Okay, let's keep our introduction short. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, now the clips that I'm going to be working with here, I'm just going to come to my footage folder. I've actually got a multicam folder here just for this particular occasion. And you'll see that what I have here is just some footage of actually myself doing a reading at a wedding. Now you can hear the audio is not that spectacular. This is just wild audio off the top of one of the cameras. Now, obviously that's something that's important to keep in mind is that, you know, when you're going to be doing multicam work, I mean, obviously most cases editors are going to be the ones watching this, but remember you essentially are the backbone of the production only because all the footage ends up with you. So what you're going to want to make sure of is that no matter what happens, make sure that camera operator has a microphone, even if it's just wild audio running on the top of that camera because you want to make sure that you're going to have that audio for reference for what I'm about to show you. So again, you'll see just footage of me. This is some footage you can still hear me talking very quietly in the background. Okay. Then we've got sort of the super wide shot. Above all, clone yourself. A little bit better audio only because we're up in the rafters and we have Which microphone right by the speakers. And last but certainly not least, what I have is the proper final audio that was recorded off the microphone right here. Let's right, jump down a little bit. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. To which indeed Much better. Now this is going to be our master audio reference. It's going to go obviously on channels one and two of our timeline. Okay. Now what I've done is, just to save us some time here, is that I've already brought in these clips. Here they are. Okay, and they've got audio. There we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to sync all of these up. Now in the past, how we'd have to do this, especially in this case, because these clips here, if I come to my clips uh, channel, they aren't lined up. They all start at the one hour time code marks. So what I would have to do is actually come into a point where I'd start speaking, mark an in point to sync everything up. I don't have to do that anymore. All I have to do now is simply select all the clips. What I'm going to do is I can do this one of two ways. I can navigate up to clip and I can come down to group clips or of course I can simply right click on them over here in the bin and come down to group clips right here. Now of course I want to be asked what do I want to group them by. Now because I don't have any uh, film time code or sound time code and really I've got none of the other options except my new favorite option down here at the bottom included in 8.5. And of course I'm talking about waveform analysis. All I'm going to do is simply say OK and take a look at how fast Media Composer analyzes. That was all the clips it just analyzed there in one shot to basically give me this grouped clip that I'm going to take and drag and drop down into my timeline. And you'll see now that what Media Composer has actually done with this grouped clip is it's taken the video, and you'll see that I have the three angles right here, uh, obviously on video track one, but more importantly, what it's also done is it's actually taken that audio track and placed it on channels one and two. Now, of course, that is the audio only track. Now, if you're not familiar with Multicam and Media Composer, check this out. What this also represents here, this pink track, you'll see that obviously the ti current timeline is defined by the longest clip. Now in this case I happen to have angle 3 uh, as the active multicam uh, channel if you want to call it that. What it's actually showing me here is that if I jump back to the beginning, you'll notice over here in my timeline window that the uh, timeline is blank right now because what this pink bar, or I guess this would be sort of more like a coral bar, would represent is where angle 3 actually starts. It starts right there. 
Now if I was to switch the current angle to angle two, you'll see angle two doesn't start till way down here, but angle one starts way back here. So what this is actually a good thing to do is it's a good way to come in and say, okay, well let's see, angle three starts way back here and that's gonna be the earliest start of all the clips. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start my multicam right here, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing on the output. Now you'll see this clip comes down to here, so what I'll do is just put the time bar right here. Let's check angle two, farther down, right here. Okay, and angle three. Okay, so I think we're actually pretty good with angle two. Actually, take a look at that. Angle one is actually even farther down. I guess I just missed that one there. That's okay, here we go. And this will be our out point. So we now know that all of our clips, all three clips in their totality, span this range right here. So normally what we wanna do is we wanna queue it up so that our first clip is going to actually start on screen. So that'll be angle three. Now, of course, I am gonna to need to switch into multicam mode. Very simple to do. In most cases, I actually have this as a button up on my composer window. You might have it as a shortcut. And depending on how many multi-camera uh, angles you're gonna to wanna to have, this button might vary. But for me, it is, of course, the quad split right there. Now, something else I should point out is that when I do my multicam edits, Normally, I want to just do the multicam to the video only and not the audio, okay? Now, if I wanted to do it to both the video and the audio, what I can do, of course, is if I match frame my clip here, you'll see that the multicam clip now appears up here. You'll also notice that my little drop-down menu up here in the upper left-hand corner has changed, and I can, of course, assign the video or the audio to follow the video if I want to, meaning every time I make an edit, of course, the video and audio will change as opposed to just the video changing. Now, of course, I don't want that because I'm happy with my uh, audio on one and two, so I'm just gonna leave this as disabled. Of course, like I said, I could turn that on if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna leave it as off, okay? Now, again, I'm just gonna clear the monitor here just so we don't get confused. What, of course, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the quad split on. Let's turn quad split on, there we go. I'm gonna start dragging through. You'll see that as soon as I start dragging through, everything becomes active. I've actually mapped my multicam keys to be shift one, two, and three on my keyboard. So of course, one, two, and three down here in the lower left-hand corner. So let's just hit play. I'm just gonna do a little multicam edit here. Again, I'm just sort of doing this on the fly. I didn't do any rehearsal for this. Uh, let's go to camera three. Sure, why not? Okay. I'm just gonna go back to, let's go to camera two here. As God's chosen Back to three. And beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, Let's go to camera kindness, one. Humility, and meekness, you sort of get the idea. And what I'm going to do is just stop that right there. Okay, and you'll see there's my multi-camera angles. Now, of course, if at any point I wanted to change the angle, let's just say, you know, for example, here, I don't want to go back to camera one. I want to go to camera two. No problem. You can simply select any one of the edits and simply just swap the angle out just like that. Of course, what we can also do is step into trim mode and trim this edit back and forth as necessary. Now, something that I should point out is that with the multi-cam edit that I have set up, obviously Media Composer is reading all of these channels in one shot. Now, these for me, uh, these clips are at DVC Pro HD resolution. So and you'll see that I got three streams playing back, no problem. Depending on the size of your footage, obviously in your drives and the connection to the drives and all that type of stuff, you know, multicam performance is gonna vary based on your system setup. Now, if what happens is you notice your system to start to get bogged down after you've already done your multicam, and let's just say that's part of like a two hour long sequence, and what you wanna do is you don't wanna have Media Composer having access to those channels. You wanna commit that multicam so that it's, you know, quote unquote done. What you can actually do is you can come right over here to your sequence, you can right click and all you have to do is come right down here to the commit multicam edits and as soon as you do that now of course it's important to keep in mind that as soon as you do that this is of course a destructive task meaning once you do it you can't really undo it i mean obviously you can undo it but you understand what i mean farther down the road you can't undo that i'll say commit multicams and what media composer is going to say is well hang on a second all multicam group clips in the selected sequence will be modified. For each group clip, all references to alternate takes will be removed in the sequence. Ah, but a copy of the original sequence will be created before it's updated. Of course, because you might have to go back and make a change. So Media Composer, as soon as I say OK, will commit this. Let me just say OK here. It's gonna commit this. You'll see there's my new sequence that doesn't have any groups right there. I can't come in and change anything by right clicking. 
but I still have this sequence here if I needed it to go back to and right click and change angles. Of course, if that picky client needs to make any updates to this multicam sequence, then of course they committed to saying it was done. Okay, so I hope this tutorial has shown you why the 8.5 Media Composer update, especially if you work with multicam, is an essential update because it's not only going to make your life easier, obviously, you know, multicam editing a Media Composer, but you saw how fast that setup was, super quick in analyzing those files, and it synced them together perfectly so that I don't have to worry at any point in my edit if those clips are going to fall out of sync. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button, and don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.